I think I believe, you know, I, I rarely believe when someone says it was my decision, but things are changing so much with the job. I think uh, Plepler decided it, I won't have the freedom under Stanky I used to have, and uh, whatever they want to do, I wish him luck, and he's out of there. Is that, that probably really is what happened, right? I, I think it is. It's sort of one of those things, for, forgive this uh, analogy, but if, if someone comes up to me and points a gun at me and I give them all my money, well, I, I gave it to them. They didn't <laughs> take it from me. I voluntarily gave it to them. But, yeah, my understanding from talking to people at, at HBO and at Warner Media is that uh, several weeks ago, uh, Richard Plepler made clear to John Stanky, his new boss, that he didn't think he was going to be in there for the long haul. And a lot of people had been anticipating this almost from day one of the deal closing, that of the major executives at Time Warner, that uh, Richard Plepler might be the first to leave, just because, as you mentioned, the level of autonomy he'd been accustomed to, the island that HBO was allowed to exist on in Time Warner, uh, and that stuff just wasn't going to be the case anymore with a new owner. Looks a lot like people I know from NBC. It, Green, it, it looks like it may end up there. Kevin Riley was here, uh, and Greenblatt looks like. And do, do, what do you know? Do you know for sure that that's going to happen? They're in final, uh, the final stretch of putting that together, or what? They're in the final stretch. They're in talks, but anything can anything can happen, of course. But going back to your point, there are a lot of ex NBC Universal executives at AT and T. If if Bob goes there and and Jeff Zucker and Kevin Riley, uh, you know maybe uh, maybe Brian Roberts should lock up Steve Burke just to be safe. Uh, I, I think uh, Greenblatt, if he does come, obviously he does bring a, a vast resume of programming experience, production experience. You know, he ran Showtime for a lot of years. He ran NBC Entertainment. He's been a producer. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, that doesn't mean there's a lot of concern at, at HBO about what's what's going to happen. That's a place that does not take right. to change well. And I'd say the same for Turner as well. I don't want to forget David Levy, who's been at that company for even longer than, than Richard was at HBO, and, and his leaving is also Joe, going to be a, a seismic event. Joe, it's great to see you. Let me ask, um, you know, given Richard, Richard Plepler's departure, how do you think it's going to change the culture of HBO? Because there are so many people who have been loyal to him, and even beyond him, the culture of HBO, as you know so well, is, I don't want to say it's an insular culture, but it's, it, it, there is a real culture there. Um, and I just wonder whether you think that everybody's going to ultimately stick around. Well, I, I think insular might be a good word for it, actually. It, it is a very insular culture, and they've been allowed to exist that way under previous regimes. And I think there will be, look, just like any other place, you get new bosses, you start to pull out your resume and dust it off just in case you need it. And I think with Richard leaving that, you know, some of the other folks are going to be doing that. I know that HBO programming executives in Los Angeles were working the phones all day yesterday with agents and producers reassuring them, hey, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. But we're really just at day one of AT&T uh, Warner Media now. I know the deal closed last year, but all these things really have, are going to start happening now that all the legal hurdles are over because, of course, those legal challenges sort of had AT&T working with one hand tied behind its back. Joe, does this now mean HBO is going to be pushed mass market to, to massively increase the size of its, uh, its content library? Well, that's one of the concerns. It, it's interesting. Both Richard Plepler and John Stanky were certainly on the same page about investing more in programming for HBO. Uh, you know, if there's one thing I think it's safe to say that Plepler wasn't thrilled with under the previous management, HBO was relied on very heavily to boost Time Warner's bottom line, and he felt there wasn't enough investment in the content there. So agreement that they needed more money for programming. But having said that, I, I do think there was a concern. If you look at what Richard Plepler said to us in an interview and other people, he would say, you know, more is not better, only better is better. Right. He wanted more programming, but he, he doesn't want, he didn't want it to be sort of like Netflix, which does a lot of great programming, but there's also a lot of, I might call it filler programming. I'm sure the producers would disagree, but I, I think HBO with its marketing machine and everything else really likes to take certain shots and not throw a ton of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Is your sense that Richard Plepper will ultimately be replaced uh, or will Casey Bloys, who's, who's effectively, uh, you know, the, the one these days greenlighting uh, so much of the program, just stay in place? What happens? 
I, I don't think Richard or David Levy will be replaced. Uh, obviously, if they cut a deal with Bob Greenblatt or some other executive to come in, that person would sort of serve as a chief content officer, kind of the same way David Nevins now has that job at CBS. But, uh, you know, the Casey question is, is a good one. For now, my understanding is, you know, Casey's uh, staying put. I don't think, if I'm AT&T right now, I'm trying to reassure Casey Bloys, Kevin Riley, other key executives at those companies, hey, guys, you know, you know stick with us, believe in what we're doing here. This is about but do we know whether, for example, Casey, ship. do we know whether Casey, for example, shares the same view of of building out the HBO franchise in a more if if you believe if, if the view is that it's it's going to be more middle market, does he share that view? Well, I can't. I certainly can't speak for Casey. I I, I know I'm sure he would love to have more programming and more of an arsenal to make it. To the question of what kind of programming, that's that's hard to say. I know HBO. And this is sort of HBO's own spin, too. They like to portray themselves as kind of an art museum and their curators. But HBO has always made plenty of uh, populist-type shows uh, y y as well, and comedies and, and movies. And, and maybe they, one could argue, maybe they should do more of that. Not everything needs to be considered for Emmys and Peabody's versus just good, funny shows that get viewers in. So you know, we may see a slight change in the, in the programming strategy. But again, we'll just all have to keep our eyes open and see what happens.